this time, I would like to remind everybody that you are listening to jradio.com. If you would like to listen to us on the telephone, you can listen to us by dialing 712-432-4217. That number again is 712-432-4217. The number to call after the show, after the story, that is, to tell us your name and what lesson you learned in tonight's story is 718-683-5858. Very good, Yossi. And, of course, if you'd like to listen to us live or on the archives, you can call 718-506-9099. That number again is 718-506-9099. And just follow the menu if you want to listen to us live or follow the archives. I would also like to take this moment to remind you that j Radio can definitely use your donations. So, the address is J. Radio, 2829 Nostrand Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11229. That address again is J. Radio, 2829 Nostrand Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11229. And if you would like to text in to ask for information how to sponsor or to how to advertise on jwoodradio.com, the number to text okay. in is 347-927-8398. You're going to be back or he's going to take If you would questions. also like to suggest uh. a story for me to tell, and you'd like to give over all the information and all the details of it, and uh, or possibly the source for it, you may also text in 347-927-8398, and it will be forwarded to me. Yes. Okay, my turn, Rabbi Herb. Okay, if anyone is looking to hire Rabbi Yitzhak for either storytelling, Kayak from the Maya, extreme martial arts demo, uh, you know, whether it be for, uh, you know, of a subordinate program, uh, 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 your, your yeshiva, your benos, your base Yaakov, whatever, your school, a private party, or a day camp, a uh, bungalow colony, or sleepaway camp. So, of course, the number to call is 718. 718- 375-1294. That number again is 718-375-1294. Also, you should be aware, if anybody's interested uh, for information about art lessons, martial arts lessons, you know, perhaps karate, uh, private karate lessons, Qigong energy lessons, and so on, uh, you could call also 718-375-1294 for more information. And please be aware that Rabbi Erbsch's books are still available in your local farm store, along with many of his CDs and a new one, too. And for those CDs that are not in the stores, you could call Rabbi Yitzhak at 718-375-1294, and he will be more than happy to send you a complete list, either by email or fax. Wow, did I get everything in? I think so. I think we can now start our story. Okay, Rabbi Herbs, are you ready for the story? <laughs> what do you mean if I'm ready? Are you ready? I think so. Are you sure? Okay. So I have a very interesting story. I don't remember ever telling it before. I don't remember telling it either. Well, sure. If I didn't tell it, you didn't tell it. Well, yeah, it could be. But maybe one time I told it when you weren't telling it. Uh, maybe, but I doubt it. Anyways, uh, this is a story that goes back over 200 years ago. It's called the Shamish of Nicholsburg. The Shamish of Nickelsburg? You mean there was like a, a an iceberg made out of nickels or something? No, 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 no. There was a place in Moravia called Nickelsburg. As a matter of fact, at that time, about 200 years ago, Nickelsburg was the capital of Moravia. Really? Are you, next thing you're going to tell me that this part of Moravia was uh, like 200 years ago part of the province of the Austrian and Hungarian uh, Empire, right? Uh, that's right. And then you're going to tell me it's part of Czechoslovakia nowadays. That's right. How do you know this? Ah, I'm looking at your paper. Oh, Yassi, would you please? Okay, anyways, so now <clears throat> let me tell you something about uh, uh, Moravia. Moravia was a nice big province. And, of course, Nickelsburg. I know, it was the capital. That's right, it was the capital. Now, in Nickelsburg, there was a lot of Choshevar Abonim there. You know, and, and Prague is near there also, you know, and uh, 
Of course, there were the famous tzaddikim like we all know about. Oh, you mean like uh, uh, Rabbi Yehuda Leib, uh, the, 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 the Ben Metzal, or something like that, the Marami Prague? Yep. And, and also the great Titus Yantef, you know, Rabbi Yantef Lipman Heller, right? That's right. Now, let me tell you something. Whoever became the chief rabbi of Nikolsburg wasn't just the chief rabbi of Nikolsburg. Besides being the Avbezen over there, he was also the chief rabbi of Moravia. Oh! You mean like he's the head rabbi or something like that? Yep, that's correct. You got that right. So anyhow, uh, we're going to tell you how Rav Shmuel Schmelke, I don't remember his last name, but Rav Shmuel Schmelke was one of Talmidim of, let me guess, uh, <laughs> what's the problem? You're covering up your paper. That's right, because I want to say it without you. Uh, all right, could you look over there? Where? Uh, oh, you know, yeah, sure, he was one of the big Talmidim of Rav Dov Bear of Mezrich, you know, the, the Mezrich of Magid, you know, one of the top Talmidim of the Beshem Tov. So Rav Shmuel Shmelka was some kind of a great, great Tzadik, right? <laughs> you tricked me over there. <laughs> it works every time. Okay, anyways, uh, so you're right. So this is a story about uh, Shmuel Shmelka, how he became a the rabbi of, the chief rabbi of Nicholsburg, and how he was almost kicked out, and how he stayed. Oh, wow. That's the whole story? No, no, I have to tell what happened, though. Oh, good idea. Well, anyways, uh, there was a committee meeting that was... Uh, that's where we're going to start from. A committee meeting? What, deciding on a lunch program for yeshiva? No, 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 no. It's 200 years ago. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Well, anyways, there was a board meeting of the Balabatim, if you want to call it, the Askonim, you know... Uh, uh, you know, the, the Panis Ayoyims, the Panis Ahoyde, you know, the, the, the big Hebra in, 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 uh, in Nickelsburg. They were getting together. By Rabbi's side, uh, apparently, uh, it's time to, uh, for us to choose a, uh, new chief rabbi for Moravia. Oh, uh, yes, I agree. That's what we have to do. Excuse <laughs> me, pardon me. Yes, uh, so let's put out the word, spread the word, and... And let's get some candidates to come down here for a Shabbos and uh, give a prober to see how he's doing. And so, sure enough, what happened was, of course, all kinds of different rabbanim, the big Talmidah Chacham, came down to, to try out. And Rav Shmuel Shmelka was one of them. That's right. You got that so, so right. Well, anyways, Rav Shmuel Shmelka came down, and he was very humble. But he knew that he had a calling. Uh, what do you mean he had a calling? There was no telephones at that time. No, no. A calling also means, like, you feel what your destiny is supposed to be. He felt that he was supposed to become a rov to help out the people. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so anyway, so what happened was is, so he came down there, and Rashmul Shmelka started to speak to everybody. Merabesai, I am feeling honored that you have chosen me to come for the Shabbos to be able to speak to the Oilam, and I will try my best to give you a nice drosha that you will enjoy and also walk away from something. And sure enough, he gave such a drosha, I'm telling you, they were like mamish and the spoil from it, and nobody fell asleep. Why? Because somebody was tickling them? Someone was going around, ah, I can't fall asleep. No, 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 not because of that, because he spoke so well. And, of course, Reb Shmuel Schmelke went back to his hometown. And then, a couple of weeks later, he got a message. He opened up the letter, and he looked at it. Ah, Baruch Hashem, seems to be they have chosen me to become their Rebbe, the chief rabbi of Nicholsburg, and also the chief rabbi of Moravia. Very nice, very nice. I will accept. And sure enough, what he did was he packed his bags, took his family, and he moved out all the way to Nicholsburg. It took a while to get there, of course. Are you going to do the stuff with the wagon and like, and, and, the, and the horse is going, and, and the horse is going, are you going to do any of that stuff? Uh, no, I don't have to. Why? Because he just did it. Oh, good point. Okay, anyway, so what are we doing now? Uh, well, we're now uh, Rashmul Shmelka got there, and one of the head Askonim over there, you know, he came over to him and said, Tailing it all, Shlom I must tell you 
That is a great honor that you should be our Rav of Nickelberg and also the chief rabbi of Moravia. You have a great yiches and you have great schusim, uh, but we need to hear it for ourselves, and that's why we uh, asked you to come for a Shabbos and Baruch Hashem. Uh, it was a unanimous decision that you should be chosen. Please, do not try to speak in a way that it should go to my head. I accept it because it is my job to be able to try to help Klal Yisrael in any way I can. The Nickelberg is pretty big, and I could do the most over here, and by being the chief rabbi of Moravia, I can astara, do a lot more. And of course, he began to see that he had to do a lot more. But it wasn't so posh and it wasn't so easy. What do you mean? It wasn't so posh and it wasn't so easy. What do you mean? Well, he realized that people were coming to him. Rabbi, Rabbi, I have a big shiloh. Rabbi, I have a big shiloh. Yes, what is your shiloh? What's your question that you have? Rabbi, I have a big shiloh. I hear you, but why don't you tell me what your shiloh is? Rabbi, I have a big shiloh. Well, wait a minute. <clears throat> I know why you don't hear me. Could you please take the cotton out of your ears? Rab wow, I could hear again. Wow, <clears throat> Rabbi. Yes? I don't have the shiloh anymore. What do you mean? What was your shiloh? I was uh, asking one night I went to sleep, and when I woke up in the morning, I couldn't hear anymore. And I wanted to ask a child if there was anything I did wrong. <laughs> and you found cotton in my ear. Now I remember the night before there was so much noise from the next door neighbor. Uh, 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 no lush and horror. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, there was a lot of noise I was hearing. So, so in order for me to fall asleep, I put cotton in my ear. When I woke up the next morning, I forgot that I had cotton in my ear. And I was wondering how I lost my hearing. Oh, thank you, Rabbi. You're so great. And of course, besides some silly questions here and there, he definitely had great questions being asked to him, too. And of course, like all Gedolim, the reason why he answered even those silly questions was because if Chas Sholem, he makes choizik, or he makes fun of a, a Shiloh that was silly, when a person has a real Shiloh, he will become afraid to ask. And, of course, he didn't want that to happen. So, sure enough, you could rest assured, he made sure. He made sure, definitely, 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 that uh, he answered every question. But one day, he was sitting to, after Mincha, and he started thinking, Hmm, I see. I'm a lot busier than in the other towns where I was a rav. Hmm. I'm not having as much time as I want to learn, but these people do need me, so I have to do something. Hmm, I know what I'll do. Of course, hundred percent. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to cut down on the time that I give to the people, but instead, I'll cut down on the amount of sleep that I take. And sure enough, that's exactly what Reb Shmuel Schmelke did. He cut down on the amount of sleep, and everybody seemed to love Rab Shmuel Shmelke. And even though Rab Shmuel Shmelke followed the ways of the Baal Shem Tov and the Mazritcha Magid, which was at that time considered the Hasidic way, so therefore everybody was aware of that, but they didn't hold it against him because everything else that he did stood out so fine, so beautiful. Now that we understand what Rav Shmuel Shmelke is about, let's find out about the Shamash. Now, it doesn't say in this Maisa Bichel, which means in this Maisa book, it doesn't say what the Shamash's name is. So, because he's an old Shamash, and because it doesn't say his name, we're just going to call him Alte, okay? So the Shamash was Alte. He was an old Shamash. But even though he was an old Shamash, but he still had his Koyches. And he was not the most learned person in the world, but he was so Ehrlich, it was unbelievable. Just watch him daven, and you would see. I can't watch him daven. He lived over 200 years ago. Good point. Okay, but anyways, use your imagination. Okay, I'm trying to picture how he looked. Okay, so anyways, while you're picturing, I'll continue. And what happened was as follows. He was there, uh, the shamash, 
working for, you know, every chief rabbi. And, of course, the way he did it was like this. Every morning. They didn't have alarm clocks, right? Don't tell me. He used to go around with a little hammer knocking on everybody's window. <laughs> you know the story? Uh, no, I'm just taking a lucky guess. Well, that's what he did. So let's follow him around. Rabalta, are you there? Uh, sure, I'm right here. Okay, time to wake up people for Shachris. Let me knock on this person's door. Out to the window. Hello? Who do you say to me, Shinashka? Wake up, you sleepy head. Oh, I shouldn't be calling them sleepy head. You ho, sleepy ones, wake up. It's time to go to Shachris. I'm getting up, I'm getting up. Okay, I heard him, I heard him. Let me go to the next window. Hello, time to go to Shachris. Hello. Uh, I have to turn over my bed one more time. If you do, I'll bang again. Knock, knock, let's go, wake up. And sure enough, he would do that. He would knock on everybody's door, waking up everybody to come to Daven Shachris. And, of course, this is what he did every single day. And then, of course, before he went to shul himself, he needed a little break. So it was, uh, you know, I guess it would, you call a tradition or a minig that he had. And since he was the shamish of the chief rabbi, and the chief rabbi always stayed in the particular house that was designated for the chief rabbi of Nicholsburg. So the shamish used to come over there and enter, but of course... Hello? Yes, come in, come in, come in. <laughs> Alta, kim, kim, kim around. Come, come, come inside, come inside. And so Alta would come inside. And of course, he would sit down on a little recliner and raise his feet a little bit so they could rest. And he would drink a nice hot cup of coffee or a hot cup of tea. And one morning, while he was there, he saw something that caught his eye. And mind you again. I know. He was like a simple yid, right? And he's about to see something that's really, like, out of this world. Um, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Wow. Unbelievable. What did he see? Well, if you quiet down, I could tell you. Oh, right. I don't know the story yet. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what did he do? Well, what happened was is as follows. He went over. You hear? You listening? I'm listening. I'm listening with anticipation. Wow. So what did he do? Okay, so what he did was as follows. He saw. He thought he saw someone by the Rav's chamber. The Rav was learning with such a beautiful melody. And he saw someone standing there. And the Shamish quietly walked over. Yassi. <laughs> Yassi, he walked quietly. Oh, oh, so I shouldn't go. No, you should not go. Okay, should I go? Yes, see, quietly means quietly, tiptoe. Oh, like this? Yes, see? Oh, like that. Yeah, that's better. And so he tiptoed quietly over. Rab Alta came to the doorway and looked. Huh? Who is that? Strange. I never saw this person. I know everybody in this town. I even know the rub right now. He's the newest person here in this family. Uh, this guy never saw like this. The clothing that he's wearing. Wow. He's got such long hair and everything. Uh, he's an old man, too. Uh, whoa. He's wearing a leather gartel. <laughs> a leather belt wrapped around his, his waist. <laughs> Who is this man? Oh, oh I, I'm not going to disturb the rabbi while he's learning. <laughs> no way. No how. I'm not going to do this. No, no, no. I'll just wait here. I better not sing. I don't want to distract the rabbi. And so he stood there patiently and, and very quietly. And then when the rub was ready to stop so he can go to shul for shacharis, this strange guest started to leave. And, of course, Rav Shmelka went over, Shmuel Shmelka went and escorted him to the door. And then he came back in. And then the <coughs> Shamish, who pretended uh, that he didn't see anything, uh, you know, walked over 
And he couldn't hold himself back. Uh, 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 and sure it, uh, 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 Chief Rabbi, Reb Shmuel Shmelke, may I, may, 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 why are you so nervous? Is there something wrong? Do you have a shyly you want to ask me something? Please, by all means, Rebalta, ask me. Oh, oh, all right. Um, 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 I know everybody in this town. Baruch Hashem, that's good to know. So if there's somebody that I need to send you to get, you'll know how to find him, right? Yes, 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 that's true also. But, Rebbe, there's something else I need to tell you. Yes, what is it? Well, um, there's one person I don't know who he is. Really? Who is this person that you don't know? Well, Rebbe, um, <laughs> um, 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 um Maybe I shouldn't have done it, but I, but I did. Shouldn't have done what? Did what? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, Rabbi, you know, I heard you learning so nicely. Mm -hmm. And, well, I, I love the melody and everything, so I, I, I came to your doorway and I peeked inside. And, and, and then I, I saw somebody in the room with you. Mm -hmm. And what did this person look like? Well, he was, um, you know, a, a slim type of person, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I couldn't really take a look at that because he was wearing like a roby type of clothing. Like, it wasn't from our times. And and he had like this leather gartle, you know, tied around his waist and his long hair and everything. And, and, and I, I, I didn't recognize him. Was she a guest that came to sleep over, or the, you know, in our town? Actually, no. Really? And who is he? Uh, well, it's better that you don't know. But, uh, but I already saw him, so I know he was here. Oh, please, Rabbi, please tell me who he is. Well, all right. I will tell you, but you must keep it a secret. And right now, at this present moment, I'm not exactly sure why you were Zeicher to see him. You actually saw the man with the white hair? Yes, long white hair. And with the leather belt? Yes, the leather gartle wrapped around his waist. Hmm. And what did you see him doing? He was standing there, hopping and awe. He was, he was just absorbing everything that you were learning. Hmm. Don't know why you were Zeicha, but I'm going to tell you who he was. Try not to be in shock. All right. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> it takes a lot to shock me. I've seen a lot in my lifetime. Not this person. Well, when I saw him this morning. Yes, 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 you saw him this morning. But you don't know who he is, and I will tell you who he is. O okay. Who is he? That was Eliyahu Hanavi. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. Relax. You're going to see him here more often. He comes here almost every morning. <laughs> relax, relax, take it easy. The only thing that I don't understand is how a person like you was eager to see him. There must be something about you that I don't know yet. <laughs> or Hashem has a reason for revealing him. No, no, whatever it is. But remember, you must keep this a secret. Yes, yes, I'll keep it a secret, all right? <laughs> I don't know if anybody will believe me. <laughs> I sure they all love me. Wow! Unbelievable. <laughs> wow! All right, 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 please. Quiet. Keep it to yourself. Right. I'm going to keep a secret. Yes, yes, yes. And so the shamash kept the secret. He didn't tell anybody about it. He was pretty quiet about it. He was pretty good about it. Mm hmm Yes, indeed. Now, let me tell you something. In a different town, there was this person. And again, it doesn't say what his name is in the Maise It doesn't say what his name is in that uh, book that I saw, this particular story. It doesn't say his name. It just said there was a yid in such and such a town, and that's what he did. So I'm going to tell you... Well, we don't want to just call. You don't want to call Poloni Bambaloni, right? So therefore, you're going to give him a name. What kind of name are you going to give him? Um, let's just call him uh, Mechala. Okay, Mechala. Are you there, Mechala? Huh? Yeah. Okay, I'm here. 
Ich heiße Mechel. Schöne Leichem, ich bin Mechel. Ein Schöne Leichem, Toyota Yashi, Schöne Leichem, aber Erbs. And even though I'm living 200 years ago, uh, I still see you now because uh, we use our imagination. Uh, that's right. That's what we do in a story. Okay, go ahead. Uh, start your own. Yeah, hi, Schmechala. I work on myself so much. I have, can I know how I such a talent? I know how to draw. I'm so good with my hands. I know how to make dolls out of my hands. I know how to make things out of wood and chop them and make statues out of stone and cement and everything. I know how to do this. I'm very good at it, as a matter of fact. But the only problem is I started to learn a lot more. And then as I'm learning more, I know that it says in the toilet, you're not allowed to have a molten idol. And then, nom, 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 nom. I can't have any of it. I don't want to look at these things. I have to be very early. I have to be very from. That's what I got to do. I have to make sure that I don't look at these things. That's it. No more. I'm going to sit and learn the basic methods. I'm going to do other work. Not going to draw anymore. Not going to make statues anymore. Not going to make uh, dolls anymore. That's it. And so sure enough, Mechler became a changed person. He no longer made toys uh, like dolls and things like that. He no longer made statues and other stuff. No longer. And, and he didn't draw either. He was always very good at it. And he was so careful not to do this. Then one day, he was walking in the streets in one of the Stettlach, or one of the little cities in Moravia, where he lived. I'm very smear. I'm walking the street, and what do I see over there? A statue standing up over there. I'm not supposed to look at this. It's a boy disorder. I'm not going to look at this. No, I'm going to close my eyes. But then... Wherever he walked. I know, wherever he walked. He looked over there, he saw a picture, he saw a doll, he saw a this, he saw an ad, and it was bothering him very much, right? Uh, that's correct. It was bothering him quite a lot. And one night, he started thinking, No, this is not very good. No, 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 no. I have to do something about it. Where are you going, Mechala? Uh, kind of, I, I need to uh, go outside. Really? Where are you going? You have, a, like, a sledgehammer in your hand. What are you doing with the sledgehammer? I have to go kill a cockroach. Really, with a sledgehammer? Why can't you take your shoe and bang it with your shoe? It's a big, fat uh, cockroach, you know. I have to really, like, smash it up, you know. Come on, you don't expect me to believe that. Where are you going? What are you doing? Well, you know, there's a lot of void disorder in this shtetl here. And I am going to get rid of it. What? That's very dangerous. If you do that, they'll arrest you. Listen here. Every day I walk in the streets. I can't stand it. I'm not going to go with my eyes closed every day. You know, I, I, I can't stand this. I, I have to do something about it. I, I can't walk the streets covering my eyes to cancer charge. You know what I mean? So therefore what? What are you going to do? What do you mean what I'm going to do? I am going to walk around and, and, and break every statue that I see, and every dolly that I see. Oy, oy, oy. When are you going to do this? I'm going to do it tonight when it's very late. And all the, the whole town is going to be sloofed it. You know what I mean? They're all going to be sleeping. I'll sneak around and I'll smash up every statue that's outside in the streets. Anything that's standing, cemented down, or even in the public parks or whatever, I'm going to destroy it. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you get caught, you know, they'll sentence you to death. What am I going to do? What will our children do? Uh, 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 that's why I'm doing it at night, when everybody is sleeping. I don't intend to get caught. I'm just going to do a big mitzvah. I'm going to get rid of all of this avoid disorder here. That's it. That's what I'm doing, you know? I feel a goyim are not supposed to do avoid disorder. You know that, you know? It's one of the seven mitzvahs for nine noyach, you know what I mean? Don't worry about the thing. So what did he do, Rabbi Yerbs? Aha, uh -huh. so you don't know this story. No, no, and you're not letting me in. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, so here we go. So let me tell you what happened. He went outside, he had this sledgehammer, he put it under his coat, and he's looking by Yif and Povafo, he turned this way and that way, and he looked around, and he saw. <laughs> Everything is peaceful and quiet here. Nobody's here. <laughs> right. Here's a big statue in the park. Okay, first let me take the sledgehammer, I'll break its feet, so this way I don't have to climb up. And when I break the feet, the rest of the statue will fall down. And then I'll smash the head of the statue, I'll smash the toes, I'll smash his nose. Uh, I'll do everything. Okay, here we go. Eins, zwei, drei. 
and he gave a couple of blows with the sledgehammer, broke the statue's feet. The statue came crumbling down. He didn't have to smash too much because the heavy weight smashed itself. And he started going around all over the place. Wherever he saw a statue, some stores, some glacier stores had statues standing out on the front. And whatever it was, he started smashing. Anything he thought was a, a picture of Avoid Zara or anything that looked like Avoid Zara, he started breaking and smashing. And he was starting to become a little careless because, ha <laughs> ha, I'm doing this very good. Baruch Hashem, so far so good. I'm so quiet, nobody hears me, everybody's still sleeping. <laughs> but there was a night watchman that was patrolling the streets, and he began to hear noise. What is it that I hear over there? Do I hear some noises coming? What is this noise? <gasps> Wait a second. What is that on the floor? Oh, no. A smash statue. This is not very good. Oh, no, no, no. Let me look further. Let me find... Oh, there's another broken statue. What's that? I wait, I hear, I hear something. <laughs> coming from over there. <gasps> This is Jewish man. He's breaking statues with the sledgehammer. Hey, you over there, stop! Stop in the name of the law! And of course, that Yid, Mechala, he started running. I, I, he found me. I, I, the sledgehammer's going to slow me down. And he dropped it. He dropped the sledgehammer. Well, wasn't he worried about they're going to find the sledgehammer and then they'll check the fingerprints? <laughs> yeah, see, 200 years ago, they didn't check for fingerprints. Oh, forgot. 200 years ago, right. Okay. So what'd they do? Well, when they chased after him, he started screaming, Hey, this guy broke the statues. Help! We need more police. Help! Help! And some people started waking up. They all popped out of the houses, and sure enough, they surrounded Mechala, and they arrested Mechala. And Mechala was brought to jail. And the next morning... He was brought in front of a judge who was not too friendly to Yidin. Oh, let me see what's going on here. <laughs> let me see now. I see. It appears to me that um, this uh, case over here is an extraordinary. Let me see. What? I can't believe this, what I'm reading here. Is your name Mechala? Yeah, my name is Mechala. And did you single-handedly break all of those statues that are listed here on the charges against you? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> the name of you? Ha! A Jew destroying our statues, our Voida Zara, our Chutzpah. Ha! You will be sentenced to death. And wait, wait, you don't understand. I was doing you guys a favor. I'm getting a little bit of a I feel the same mission I know you. You're not supposed to do this. Hello? You don't hear me? I hear you. You are hereby being sentenced to death. Do you understand? You will be sentenced to be hung in the middle of the town square. And the rest of the Jewish people will be expelled from here. And of course, this was a bad gazera. The rabbonim of the town, they started to come and plead. And the rabbonim said, Hey, uh, please, George, Your Honor, I must bring to your attention to understand that this person, Mechler, he worked on his own. Nobody had anything to do with this. He did this on his own. We're not responsible for him. He did this on his own. I don't know what made him go crazy and do this. I have no idea. Please, don't send us out. And so the judge seemed to have Rachmanus. And the judge said, all right, fine, fine, fine. So be it. So be it. Okay, we won't chase you out. We'll just hang him. And unfortunately, they took Mechala out, and they carried out the punishment. He was hung in the middle of a town square. And now Mechala was gone. Now, in those days, if a person died, the Chevra Kedisha in that territory, in that particular town especially, and some other towns did the same thing, they had a fund. They raised money, and they had a special fund that if Chas Vashon, a person died, they gave some money to help support the almana and the family. That's what they used to do. They used to do that. And so the almana came after Shiva. She came to the Chevra Kedisha and said to the Chevra Kedisha, Oh, please, you have to help now. My husband died. 
and we have nothing. We have nothing to be able to support the family. Please give us the funds that you normally give to an almona. Please, can you give it? And one of the <coughs> heads of the said, I'm sorry, madam. I'd love to give it to you, except we have a problem here. Really? What's the problem? Well, you see, the funds are given for a person who dies regularly. But you see, we we kind of uh, feel that your husband uh, caused his own death because it was like suicidal to be able to do what he did because if he's going to break all the statues and he gets caught, of course they were going to put him to death. So therefore, it's not called that he died by natural means, so we're not required to, to support you. Then who is supposed to support me? Who's supposed to support my family? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to go to the rest of the community and try to raise money. No, 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 no. It's it's your your obligation. No, 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 no. It's not our obligation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's your obligation. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Then we'll go to a din Torah. And so, they went to a din Torah, but it was very difficult for the Dayanim to choose to to decide what to do. Well, while thinking about what's going on here, I think that what we have to do is. We have to send this case to um to the great uh, uh, Rabbi Smolka, the chief rabbi of Moravia. Uh, he'll have to judge us. It's too big for us. And so, sure enough, they sent that Din Torah over there. And the Shamash was there that night. And he was just sitting there relaxing and resting in between doing his chores as a Shamash. And all of a sudden, he heard some talking some noises, and again he got up. Hey, what's going on here? Let me see what's going on here. Let me just move myself up a little bit like this. Let me take a peek. Just Eliyahu Hanami again, but who is that man? I don't recognize that man. Who is he? Hmm. That man, I, I don't know him. Wow, let me take a closer look. <gasps> He's wearing a royal robe, and he has a crown on his head. He's like a king. From when is he? Which king is she? <gasps> Wait a minute. Let me get into the shadows over here. The rub is coming. He's got a candelabra with him. And he's escorting both of them to the door. There they go. <laughs> wow. That's for sure, you know, I remember him, and, and, and who is this king? Uh, the rabbi's going to the door. Let me follow behind a little bit so he doesn't see me. <gasps> He's opening the door. <laughs> the rabbi's going out a little bit into the street with them, and, well, they kind of disappeared. Wow. But they stayed long enough to give the rabbi the ability to do the mitzvah of being the lover, I guess. Oh, let me just ask the rabbi. Um, here he comes back. Ah, Baruch Hashem. It was a very interesting evening. Ah, Alta, you were here the whole time? Uh, <laughs> well, um, um, <coughs> kind of. I see. And what did you see tonight? Uh, well, I saw Eliyahu Novi again. Yes, and? And I saw someone else. You did? Hmm. <laughs> and was that someone else, me? I saw you too, but... Uh, but the other person was wearing a royal robe. A royal robe, and? and he had a crown on his head. He was like a king. I don't know from when. Hmm. I don't understand how or why that you're being so eager to see this. There must be a reason in a Shemayim, but let me tell you something. Please try not to ask questions. Uh, the second person that you saw was King Menashe, the son of Chizkiyohu. What? King Menashe? What was he doing here? Well, you know, he was, uh, his neshama, part of his tuba that he has to do, his neshama, uh, you know, has to, uh, uh, how should I say it? You should tell it to me anyway. I'm listening. All right. He needs a ticket. has to be fixed. So in every generation, more or less, um, the neshama comes down in different forms and tries to be masak in the neshama. You understand, because, you know, Menashe did a lot of Avodah Zarah. 
Yes, so what does this have to do with Menasha coming now? Ah, very interesting. Okay, so I will tell you, but you're not supposed to tell this to anybody. All right, I, please. I, 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 I didn't tell anybody I saw Leo Novi yet, did I? I guess not. Okay, so let me explain to you what it is. You see, what ended up happening is like this. And he told over the story that happened with Rab Mechala. And so you see, so the Bezid didn't know what to do because on one hand, uh, he did cause his own death because he did something that if he gets caught, he would be put to death. So it's like he took his own life. And therefore the Chaver Kedisha in one hand is not uh, to um, to pay him. On the other hand, uh, you know, he, he was trying to do a mitzvah. So maybe, uh, you know, he sacrificed his life to doing a mitzvah. So it wasn't just he took away his life, you know, just like that. I see. So uh, what did you decide? I, I'm still making my decision. So what was Menashe here? Ah, I see. That person, Mechala, really had the neshama of Menashe. Now this time around, this person who had the neshama of, of Menashe was really trying real hard to eradicate Avoy the Zara. Really? Eradicate? You mean like to get rid of? Yes, 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 to rid of Avoy the Zara. And he meant it sincerely. And he did it with Mamash like a lot, you know, like his. So it kind of did a kind of a chicken for Menashe, you know, who ended up having an Avoy the Zara even in the base of Migdash, you know. So um, he, he, I think, I hope that by now, uh, this person, you know, that uh, took the Neshama from Menashe. I, I'm hoping that what he did will cause Menashe to have his final tshuva and his neshama won't have to keep returning. You understand? But what, 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 you mean so what, Menashe was here to defend him? Yes, yes, yes. Menashe came down here to tell that he did not give up his life just like that. He was very sincere about trying to eradicate Avoid Zara. He meant it for real. Oh, so that means? Yes, I probably will decide. But I said I'll give my answer tomorrow morning. But I, 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 I will probably decide that uh, the Chaver Kedisha are, are mechuyev to be, um, to be mefarnes, uh, to, to, to support uh, this widow. And sure enough, that was the job he did. And sure enough, Menasha, I mean, not Menasha. You mean Alta. Yes, Alta. Alta kept the secret very well. Mimamish kept it to himself. He didn't say a single word. He kept it to himself. And nobody knew, except for the Rav, of course. And of course, I know, Hashem is Baruch, he always knows everything. Right. So anyways, so what happened was is, one day, there was a special Din Torah that was brought in to Rav Shmuel Shmelkin. One person was a rich man. <laughs> so, the rabbi is calling me here for a Din Torah. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay. All right, and you... Uh, so, you, 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 you know, so let me tell you something. Uh, Rabbi, you know me. Um, I'm, I'm a very rich person, and I'm a big businessman, and I do a lot of business. Now, you know, I'm, 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 you know I, 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 I'm very well respected around here. I understand, but in a dintaira, I must hear everybody's side. Okay, so um, you have a call to a dintaira by this Yid, uh, Rav Zanvo. Rav Zanvo? Please uh, state the facts. Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm going to state the facts. All right, this is the facts. I'm a poor kid, and 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 and, and I want to do business uh, 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 with with Rep Sander. And then when I came over to Rep Sander to do your business with Rep Sander, so uh, we signed a contract, and everything was supposed to be. And then, um, for whatever reason is, um, I feel I was supposed to make things. And, 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 you know, like, build things, and then, and then Sender was supposed to buy it. Now, Sender did not want to give a deposit. He says he's trustworthy. Everybody trusts him. So what happened was this. Um, something happened that Sender, um, the merchandise that he was supposed to take from me, the person that ordered from him canceled the order. So he wanted to cancel the order for me, but I spent so much money, and I made the stuff already, and now he doesn't want to pay for it. So I hold, and since we have a contract, and I was ready, on time, he has to pay. Mm-hmm, I see. And you, Rep. Sender, what do you say? Well, it's very simple. I'm a very well-to-do businessman. We heard that part already. Yeah, and, and everybody respects me. We heard that part. And everybody knows that whatever I say in business goes, you know. 
So I, I, I did come to this person, and I told him that I have a customer, and as long as I have this customer, uh, you know, that wants this thing, I want to order this thing from you. But then my customer canceled on me, so I canceled on him. But uh, he already started the work, and he had it ready on time. Uh, did you cancel it before he started? Uh, of course not. Of course not. Mm -hmm. And why didn't you cancel it earlier? Because I was hoping I'd convince the guy to take the order, but he didn't, so you know what I mean? I hear what you're saying. I hear. But on the other hand, just let me tell you clearly, basically, you don't have a case. Since you have a contract and it's signed, it's a Moise Mechaber over he has the merchandise, and it's done on time, so you're more to pay him. What? How dare you rule against me? It's not me who ruled against you. It's the Torah's way. We have this thing, Amoyse Mechaber or Raya, and he brought the Raya. He has a contract, he has the merchandise, ready on time, and you're more to pay him. And you have no proof that you gave the cancellation before he did the work. So you have to pay him. That's the Pesach Din, Zagizund. Okay, next. Huh, can you remember that rabbi? Did you see what he did? He busked against me. Uh, chutzpah. Now this person, Rab Senda, he was so upset with Rab Shmuel Shmelka that he began to speak with people. You see that? This rabbi is trying to busken like the, those Hasidic people. You know what I mean? We're misnagged him over here, you understand? We, we, we don't follow that way. Now, of course, this is a lie. Because the reason why it was a lie is because everybody knew Schmelke from the beginning. Or Shmuel Schmelke lived exactly the way he did when he came to town, before he came to the town. Nothing changed. Just that this guy had a bad in Torah, didn't go his way. It upset him because this spoiled person did not have his way. He couldn't get his way because of Shmuel Schmelke stuck to the Torah. But that didn't stop him. He started speaking Lashon Hara. He started spreading rumors, and gradually, there was a semi machlaik is going on around the town. I say that the rabbi should stay. Oh, yeah. And I say the rabbi should go. I say the rabbi should stay. And I say the rabbi should go. There was a mamish, a big machlaik is going on. And of course, <laughs> eventually, the askonim, the panasim, they heard about it, too. We have a tough case over here. What do you think we should do? Well, to tell you the truth, it's a very tough situation. That person, the Gavir, is very influential. I really think that we don't have much choice. We're going to have to ask the rabbi that he should leave. Do you think we could go over and ask the rabbi to leave? Well, I'm not going to ask him to leave. You want him to leave? You ask him. Oh, no. That's right. I wouldn't ask him to leave. You know what? I have a great idea. Who says we have to ask him? We're the partners. And, uh, there's a shamash over here. Uh, send for the shamash. And sure enough, they send for the shamash. And the shamash says, Huh? 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 Is the rab? The rab was sending for me? But, but, oh, oh, it's not the rab. Who's sending for me? The partners she must send in for you. Oh, oh, shalom aleichem. Hey, Rab Tovid, uh, 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 Gabriel, <laughs> Victor, how are you, how are you? <laughs> oh, Shmuley, <laughs> how are you, how are you, how are you? All right, stop with the formalities, okay? Burach, you tell him. All right, I was selected to tell you. Listen to me very carefully. We have a very tough situation going on here. I'm sure you've heard a lush and horror that's going on about the Rav. And there's a lot of controversy. Uh, we have the towns split in half. You know, the whole town of Nicholsburg is split in half. I mean, there are people that love the Rav, and there are people that are now against the Rav. So uh, we can't have machlekes in our town. So for the benefit of the town, I think it's time to ask the Rav to take a position somewhere else, and we'll have to get another Rav. And all of a sudden... The shamus was very upset about this. He gave a clap on the dish. Flash! How dare you! <laughs> uh, take it easy, take it easy. Don't get a heart attack. Hey, relax. <laughs> a whisper from you people. Do you know who your rub is? Do you know who Shmuel Schmelke is? <laughs> you don't know who he is? No, you don't. 
<laughs> you want to listen to that Gavir who didn't want to listen to a Din Taira? That's the person you want to listen to? You don't want to stop the rumors that he's pushing? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I'm pretty good at keeping secrets. And there's one thing I'm going to keep secret. I'm not going to go to the road. Oh, no, no, no. One second, you're saying that he's so chashiv. What makes him different than any other rub? We can get another rub that's a big time and a No, 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 no. All right, I kept my word to the rub for all these years. And now, I think I understand now uh, that it's time for me to, to break my promise and, and tell what I saw. Tell what you saw? What are you talking about? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Please, please explain yourself. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well... Let me explain you something, okay? Are you ready for this? We're ready for anything. Go ahead, go ahead. Explain, explain. Please, please, go ahead, go ahead. All right, all right, all right, all right. You see, um, um, up until now, I, I, I really didn't understand why I was saying, uh, uh, for what I'm about to tell you. But now I think I know why. I was saying, uh, so I could be able to tell you people that you should understand what kind of great chanted Rob Shmuel Schmelter is. And you won't get rid of him if you hear what I say. All right, all right, fine, fine, fine. You keep saying that, but tell us what it is. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, do you know that Eli Yohanabi comes very often, almost every single day, to visit and listen to the learning, and even they talk Taira uh, between uh, Eli Yohanabi and uh, Shmelke. I mean, you know that? You know, there was small smelter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, I, I saw this myself. I witnessed this many times, but I gave my word. I wouldn't tell anybody. And he couldn't understand why I, a simple shamus, was zeicher to be able to see this. But now I see why. Because I have to save the Rav. He's a good bit sounded. And not only that, one night there was a Din Taira. You know that? Uh, what do you mean one night? Din, din Taira all the time. Yes, but uh, how many times does King Manasha come? King Manasha, <laughs> you're really funny. You're really funny, funny, funny. Yeah, so funny. <laughs> well, yeah, when I prove it, it's not so funny. Do you remember that guy, uh, Mechala? Oh, yes, Mechala. Yes, yes, I remember. He was from that other settle uh, in Moravia, in Moravia and, and, and uh, he was sentenced to death over there. And uh, But, of course, he broke all the statues and everything. And, and he, so what does this have to do with it? Uh, so if a guy causes his own death, what happens? What do you mean, what happens? Uh, well, uh, the 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 Chabra Kedish are not mechuyah to support the family. But they did. Do you know why? No, you tell us why. All right, I'll tell you why. And he proceeded to tell the whole entire story of what happened that night with Menashe and uh, what he saw and what he heard and how the Rav, because of what Menashe said, because Menashe testified on behalf of Mechala, who had the neshama of Menashe, and he testified on his behalf. And the Rav, Paskin, that since his intentions were totally pure and not to Vadaka try to kill himself or have himself killed or do something that would for sure lead to his death, his purity of his heart saved him, and the Heva Kedisha was Mokoyev to take care of his family. Oh, that's very interesting. Yes, I remember that story. And he went on, and he was telling more things that he saw. And finally, the Parnassim said, You know something? This Shamus is a very great person, more greater than we think. It's not just a Rav who's a great Sadiq and was able to keep the secret that he had the horse to see El Yonavi and, 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 and Menashe, you know, but the Shamus is a simple Yid. And yet, he was safe at the seed and he kept the secret. Wow! Unbelievable. You know what? I think the Rav should say. I think so also. I think so also. I think so also. What are we going to tell the rich man? <laughs> I know what I would tell him. I would tell the rich man, if he doesn't like it, let him move out. <laughs> and anybody else who says something against the Rav. Are we going to tell what we know about it? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think we should tell. And sure enough, they kept it to themselves. And it was only after Rav Shmuel Shmelke was nifta that the story became very, very well known of how great Rav Shmuel Shmelke really was. And that's mamish what took place. And of course, the rich man, he decided to quiet down when he saw that nobody was listening to him anymore. And of course, 
everybody had more respect in the long run. Of course, they respected the Rav, but they respected this Alta Yid, who they realized had to be somebody special. He had the schus to be able to save the Rav and also to be able to see Elio Hanavi and even King Manasha. Wow, that was a fantastic story. I even got a few minutes left to take some phone calls. Do we have some time to take some phone calls? Yeah, okay. Hello, you're on the air. What is your name and what lesson do you learn in tonight's story? Hello, are you there? I guess you're not there. Okay, go to the next caller. Hello, you're on the air. What is your name and what lesson do you learn in tonight's story? Hello? Yep, you're on the air. What's your name? What lesson do you learn in tonight's story? My name is Adina. Right. And I You should always listen to Rob. You should always what? Listen to Rob. You should always listen to Rob. Okay, that's in there also. Anything else you learned in there? Yeah, you should listen to Rav. Tomorrow. Well, yes, you should do a lot of learning. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Also, okay. So um, what? If Christ even still sick. I can't hear you because you're chopping up. What did you say? If Christ is still sick, I'm so sick. You, what did I, I don't know. I didn't, you were able to make out what he said? I don't understand. I don't understand. Your, your phone line, whatever it is, is chopping. Okay. If Christ is still sick, I'm so sick. Is Christ what? Uh, uh, you know what? If you try to call back with a little clearer connection, then I'll be able to understand you, okay? Sorry. Okay. okay. Hello, you're on the air. What is your name and what lesson you learned in tonight's story? Me? Yes, you're on the air. What's your name and what lesson you learned in tonight's story? It's Hello? You. Yeah. Yes. Hello? Yeah, yeah, you're on the phone. We hear you. We hear you. Tell us what lesson. No? Look, Shane. What lesson you learned tonight's story? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on the phone. <laughs> Hello. Don't be shy. Speak up. My uh, name is Cranalia. Yes. And I learned to, that even like someone as simple as a shamus could be very special. Excellent. Beautiful. You hit the, like they say, the, the hammer hit the nail on the head. You hit one of the most important lessons. Even a simple person can be worthy and very Ella. Thank you very much. Great. That was fantastic. Thank you for calling in. Okay, do we have another phone call? Okay, hello, you're on the air. What's your name? What lesson you learned tonight's story? Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Um, I went to always to Rabbi Christy DFC. Hi. You want to tell me some lessons you learned tonight's story? What else? No, um, you want to you wanna play together? To want to play together. That's an interesting thought. But then I have to tell you to stand on line with the other 7,000 people that want to play with me. Oh. Okay. But if you have fun, is your new CD coming out? Okay, so it's definitely going to come out before the summer. It's not coming out before Shavuos, but it will definitely be out before the summer. There's no shame. Okay. I hop now. Thank you. Yeah. And remember, always be Okay, you tell that to the early car. Thank you very much. Okay, call two. Okay, next caller. Hello, you're on the air. What is your name and what lesson do you learn in tonight's story? Hot for me, the surprise, and do I know what it is? We're getting a Torah! Okay, so tell me yeah, what we're it gonna is. We're going to get on to the list. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but okay, so now tell me, tell me what lesson do you learn in tonight's story, Marsha? Um, the lesson I learned is you shouldn't really speak Russian and holler like what that Gavir did. And That's really, right. That's in Gavir, there. you shouldn't do that again. I'm sorry. All right. Listen, I just got to do the roles that they hire me for. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. You're a good actor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, Robert Herbs is signaling. Robert Herbs is signaling that he says he wants to go to the next caller. All right. So, okay, uh, okay. Okay. I'm going. Bye. Okay. Bye. Yes. Hello. Hello, uh, you're on the air. What is your name and what lesson you learned in tonight's story? Hello, hello. Are you there? Hello, are you there? Okay, we'll go hello? to the next. Yes, hello, you're on the air. What is your name and what lesson you learned in tonight's story? If crime is even time, Mary, I'm still sick. And what? If crime is even time, I'm still sick. 
But why is your phone chopping? You have a very Yosef. full... Huh? Chaim Yosef. The sky of the eighteenth season, Saramayim, still sick. Is Cha oh oh yes, Chaim Yosef Tzvi ben Sora Miriam is still sick. Yes, he definitely needs your tefillos. Yes, Chaim Yosef Tzvi ben Sora Miriam definitely still needs your tefillos. Yes, one hundred percent. Yes, thank you for asking. Yes, he definitely does. Okay, that's all the time we have. Okay, so that's all the time we have. So everybody have a wonderful, meaningful shuvus, and we'll see you Mitzvah Shem next week. So until then, everybody, goodbye, goodbye. Time for everyone. This is jrootradio.com. At this point in time, we would like to give a shout out to our friends at BSD Productions.